one of the myths of uh, india talks about the ashurs and devas churning the ocean samudra mantan with the uh, meru parvat when the earth was devoid of adequate resources they went to the sea to bring resources riches including amrit it may be a myth but today our guest sachesh chandra shanoi is one person who is working on oceans dr satish t shanoi is a renowned name in the field of oceanography born in thuravur in kerala dr shanoi completed schooling in the town Dr Shinoy has more than 28 years of research experience in physical oceanography. He played a lead role in Department of Science and Technologies with Arabian Sea monsoon experiment that changed our traditional view from a passive role for the ocean in the monsoonal process to an active role in the monsoonal air sea coupling. After the tsunami struck India in 2004 he coordinated the research that quantitatively described and an improved estimate of the extent of the tsunami source region Thank you sir thank you for joining the show Thank you Before we go into the ocean of your knowledge and your expertise in that area maybe we should start from your childhood uh, where are you from how was your childhood Uh, what kind of ambience you had when you were growing up yeah i was uh, uh, grown in a small village in uh, kerala um, i am talking uh, in 19 uh, early 1960s 1960s yes right. because i was born in 1958 58. so you can imagine what kind of facilities were available in the village yeah and uh, my ancestral house uh, was uh, very close to the ocean which was about hardly a kilometer away from mm -hmm. uh, when uh, ocean is very rough yeah. we can even hear uh, the noise of uh, the grumbling of the ocean you can hear from your house the waves uh, breaking we could uh, hear and uh, when i had to go to school uh, only school available in our vicinity was a school uh, on the beach okay. so i used to go to that so primary school mm -hmm. uh, of course it was in uh, malayalam medium and uh, most of the students there were from the fishermen uh, families perhaps uh, only half a dozen of us were from non fishermen fishing community, uh, fishing community. Uh, that's where i grew up and uh, when i we had to walk uh, on the beach there are no proper uh, roads uh, those days uh, so to reach the school i had to walk on the beach and the uh, one thing always uh, fascinating me was who is generating these waves continuously okay. very and, interesting uh, these waves uh, just come on the beach they break and another uh, um, thing came to my notice was that um, uh, sometime when we walk uh, there uh, some uh, there will be a small crowd uh, which is around a dead body and um, they used to tell that uh, this person got drowned in the sea uh -huh. uh, this but uh, this fish i mean every day they go out oh. at the sea and uh, why sometime in this is uh, happening yeah. so then they then uh, they used to tell that uh, there are uh, strong currents when um, uh, sea is angry okay and don't like uh, someone uh, meddling with the sea yeah. so sea gets angry and uh, the sea takes him away okay so i used to wonder um, this waves are always coming to the coast and they break and how this person can be drawn uh, into uh, the drawn sea. into the sea and taken away so my uh, more interest was on um, how the ocean uh, physics or uh, because I, as i went to the high school and college i uh, slowly started understanding that um, uh, the uh, physics is the uh, force controlling forces so we should understand the nature's uh, uh, physics to understand the how nature is working of course uh, the life is another uh, part but some reason i didn't get interested in uh, uh, 
uh, the life or uh, uh, biology. Biology of the ocean, but more of the physics of the ocean. Yes. And also I had uh, good uh, physics teachers, uh, especially when um, in the high school as well as um, when I went to the college. Uh, I still remember uh, uh, Professor Venkatraman. Professor Venkatraman. Venkatraman. Uh, he was uh, um, uh, teaching uh, physics and he had a peculiar accent also because he was from Tamil Nadu. Okay. Settled, uh, I was uh, working in a college in uh, Kerala. Uh, Kerala, in Chertala actually, where I did my um, graduation with a physics major. The kind of classes he used to teach, uh, he never used to use any notes or any books or anything. He as well as a mathematics teacher, uh, his uh, name was uh, Trivikraman Nair. Um, they both, uh, I, I must say that they are very good uh, teachers. Uh, they, uh, if uh, you go and learn mathematics from uh, Trivikraman Nair, you cannot score less than 100. You cannot score less than 100. <laughs> 100. <laughs> that, that, that is the way he is uh, uh, teaching. teaching. Because yes, he right. teach uh, how to solve those problems rather than um, mug up and uh, get the answer. So basically he gave you a challenge yes. which is uh, something that was doable by people like you that you know when you were a student uh, when, but at the same time it's a challenge which sort of uh, yes. engaged your uh, brain. Uh, bra brain. Not just yes. only uh, you know memorizing and saying something. I mean so he made you actually think, yes. think and uh, exert yourself yes. and excel yourself. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so after my graduation, I in fact I wanted to become uh, learn more on physics. So I wanted to um, go in um, uh, the masters in uh, physics, and uh, I even joined a college mm. to do this. Uh, then I saw this advertisement from uh, Cochin University of uh, Science and Technology for the masters in. Uh, Kusat, as uh, it called. Uh, Cochin it's University. called Kusat okay. these days. Uh, so, uh, uh, they advertise for uh, um, oceanography masters. Uh, then um, I went and inquired about um, um, what this course um, teaches and all. So, the explanation I got from one of the professor whom I met was that uh, this is uh, dealing about the physics of the, uh, it, the course is actually physical oceanography named as uh, oceanography and they, it deals with the physics of the ocean. ocean. So I felt that um, this is a good uh, opportunity to learn. the right thing. Yes, learn about. I mean, uh, both parts of your heart can be there. I mean, your physics passion and your inquisition, inquisition about ocean, both about can be the ocean. So it's a very interesting, and uh, we are having a very uh, uh, interesting conversation about how your uh, passion for ocean kind of began right from your primary school, and then how accidentally you got into a course which uh, satisfied your interest in physics and also your uh, inquisitiveness about uh, ocean. We'll continue this discussion, but we'll take a small break. Don't go. Welcome back to the show. We are with us Dr. Satish Chandra Shanoi, a oceanographer of eminence. Today, you are known for your pioneering work on the Arabian Sea monsoon experiment. Uh, can you tell us, uh, particularly our audience, in simple way, what it is? What was that experiment? What did we understand out of it? I joined the National Institute of Oceanography in Goa in early 80s, 1983. Uh, so I continued that work. Uh, later, um, uh, uh, one scientist, uh, uh, he uh, came, returned from US. Uh, his name is uh, Dr. Satish uh, Shetty. Uh, he, he, after that he became director of uh, uh, National Institute of Oceanography, NIO, NIO. Uh, Goa and uh, later he became uh, vice chancellor of uh, Goa University. Uh, so I happened to meet him and interact with him. So he, those interactions, it, I felt that uh, now uh, in the physical oceanography I should uh, expand my horizons. I should uh, learn about uh, the coastal currents, how the currents are uh, working on, uh, around our coast. So he proposed a project, then I told him I would also like to work uh, with you on uh, this uh, project. And we took up uh, those uh, studies. And uh, in um, uh, early 2000, 2002, 2003, uh, DST wanted to conduct a national uh, department of science and technology, um, kind of wanted to have a national uh, a program 
um, and they had a meeting of various scientists. So we proposed that um, uh, we must understand how the interaction between uh, ocean and the monsoon happens. So that uh, this monsoon is actually we are talking about uh, okay. southwest monsoon. Southwest monsoon yeah. or the Indian monsoon. Indian monsoon. Uh, as you know that uh, the southwest monsoon, uh, we say that first uh, hits uh, yeah. uh, Kerala coast, then it progresses uh, towards north. Towards north. So Slowly, yeah. the issues were why uh, this monsoon is hitting Kerala coast first? first is it is because of the southernmost uh, this or anything peculiar to the ocean? Uh, before that, uh, we d had done some research and we have found that um, uh, off the Kerala coast or in the southeastern Arabia, the uh, Arabian Sea, which is between uh, mainland India and uh, Lakshadweep, uh, that region, that region is very peculiar. See, monsoon comes to Indian coast uh, sometime early June or uh, end of uh, May. This is the somewhat the monsoon onset. Uh, onset in Kerala, in that, uh, the southern part it starts. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, but that uh, research, what we found was that uh, that part of the ocean, it becomes uh, very warm, um, uh, um, most warmest uh, place in the world oceans. Okay. Uh, much before that. So that place, that is you are saying between Kerala and Lakshadweep, that uh, ocean becomes the most warmest all over the world yes. just before the monsoon. Uh, we may call that as a mini warm pool. Uh, mini we, warm pool. Yeah, okay. because when we uh, compare the other, uh, uh, the entire ocean, it's a mini this. Mini. So uh, uh, we were wondering uh, why uh, that kind of a warming is, warming is taking, uh, taking place. place. And uh, we published a paper. Our explanation was that uh, uh, the entire uh, northern Indian Ocean, mm -hmm. which includes Arabian Sea and Bay of Bengal, this is uh, uh, connected with the uh, what is happening um, elsewhere in the Indian Ocean. Uh, we know that um, uh, on the, for example, you take the equatorial region of the Indian Ocean, where the winds are uh, blowing, and these winds are uh, transmitting the energy in the form of uh, what we call uh, Kelvin waves uh, um, on this equator. And these Kelvin waves, they propagate from uh, west to uh, east and they… There is somewhere from African side yeah. towards the southern Indian side and then towards… And this the, is yeah. happening much, much before our uh, monsoon wow. onset uh, takes place. And uh, these waves, uh, these are shown by several researchers. These waves, they go around the uh, periphery of the Bay of Bengal and then they reach uh, uh, our uh, west coast of India. So, uh, and then uh, at the west coast of India, they uh, propagate another sorts of waves called uh, Rossby waves. Mm -hmm. And these Rossby waves, they will have a trough as well as uh, uh, the crust. So when this down, what we call downwelling uh, Rossby waves, uh, they are uh, appear, they appear there in sometime in uh, uh, February month itself. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know that uh, 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 Bay of Bengal has a lot more uh, fresh water. Yeah. And uh, the way these waves are uh, propagating, the currents are set along the Indian coast. So these uh, coastal currents from the Bay of Bengal, they bring the uh, fresh water into the Arabian Sea. See, uh, uh, otherwise, if this kind of mechanism was not there, the Bay of Bengal would have become a freshwater lake and Arabian Sea would have become more and more salty. More, more salty. So, okay. some way nature keeps this balance. So it's mixing uh, these two. Yeah, yes. So, this uh, freshwater comes into the Arabian Sea uh, by, through these currents, what we call East India Coastal Currents or EICC. Yes. So, this freshwater, when it comes in this uh, region, because of these Rossby waves, that gets spread towards the west. west. So the, here we have uh, the downwelling conditions and this fresh water. Uh, the, so it is a very stable condition in the ocean. So this stable layer, uh, it absorbs more heat. More heat. Because the mixing is not uh, very uh, vigorous. Very little mixing is taking it's place. It's like a lens floating. Exactly, exactly. So that uh, situation, uh, this uh, heat is getting trapped in that region and uh, it leads to the formation of this uh, Small mini warm pool. pool. Mini warm pool. Yeah. So we wanted to investigate further. That is the time uh, this national project, uh, the ARMEX or Arabian uh, Sea Monsoon Experiment. Arabian Sea Monsoon, uh, monsoon Experiment. Experiment. Uh, various groups are uh, involved uh, from uh, Indian Institute of uh, Science, Bangalore, then uh, several other institutions. And we got involved and we told we would like to investigate uh, what role the oceans are playing. 
so uh, till uh, we did this experiment and we made some hypothesis uh, everyone believed that ocean is sort of a passive player in the monsoon uh, ocean Just the, uh, yeah That's ocean right. don't uh, it obeys Maybe acts maximum when the wind comes it's yeah, giving yes, moisture yeah so ocean is uh, sort of a passive uh, to the atmosphere uh, because ocean is driven by the winds uh, but uh, what we showed was that uh, even before the wind reverses or wind becomes uh, stronger uh, this uh, process in the southeastern arabian sea that is uh, only because of the ocean dynamics okay. so we brought uh, the ocean as a active player in this uh, entire uh, entire drama so um, uh, we uh, then we hypothesize that uh, if we had to understand our uh, monsoon we had to look at the uh, yeah, ocean yeah this monsoon uh, southwest monsoon is a very key uh, monsoon for india in fact that brings the uh, most of the rain for most parts of the india and uh, our guest today is uh, a person who has done excellent work in understanding our uh, knowledge of this uh, monsoon we may have to take a small break don't go away we'll come back again welcome back to eureka we are with us dr satish shanoi i am told there is a great difference between bay of bengal and arabian sea you look at uh, bay of bengal you have so much of uh, depressions uh, you have uh, cyclones but not so much for example in the southern part of arabian sea i mean we don't hear too much of uh, you know cyclone hitting uh, kerala coast or south kerala coast why is it so and i am told that you have also done some work on this very interesting question yeah uh, i must say that uh, that is another uh, important uh, or seminal work uh, which i have undertaken uh, uh, the same uh, thing bothered us uh, uh, why uh, uh, the bay of bengal uh, is generating um, large number of uh, monsoon depressions because these monsoon depressions uh, they are not cyclones they are uh, uh, depressions they don't reach cyclone stage but they are the ones which are bringing uh, most of the uh, rainfall into the central indian uh, central india as well as northern india we are they these uh, depressions they propagate on the land and bring lot of rain Uh, so why this is uh, happening Happen. because uh, both are situated on the same latitude band when so because they are in the same latitude band they should receive the same amount of same sun amount energy same amount of uh, solar uh, uh, energy solar radiation uh, solar insulation whatever we call that uh, but uh, why these are behaving different uh, two key differences are uh, first thing is um, arabian sea is more saline more than, saline uh, um, bay of bengal so uh, arabian sea is more salty, salty and, uh, and uh, bay of bengal is maybe bay of bengal is uh, not so salty because there are lots of rivers which are flooding into the uh, yeah, right the bay of bengal uh, the major rivers are uh, debouching into the bay of bengal and also uh, more rainfall over the bay more of bengal rainfall. so the bay of bengal is uh, more uh, um, fresher fresher and the arabian sea is uh, salty so we did a, uh, a heat budget calculation and uh, what we realized was that two feedback uh, cycles or the arabian sea and the bay of bengal arabian sea uh, gets uh, of course both uh, receive almost similar uh, wind speeds uh, in fact arabian sea has uh, uh, stronger uh, winds say similar type of winds are there over the bay of bengal and uh, the energy which is put uh, by the winds it can mix the arabian sea much faster Um, if I, I, we did some calculations uh, that time, um, they show that uh, Arabian Sea can be mixed within uh, one or two days. Within uh, one or two days, the whole sea. If you take a fifty yeah. meter water column, this water column uh, can get mixed in the Arabian Sea quickly uh, within one or two days. Whereas in the uh, Bay of Bengal, you need much uh, uh, longer, uh, longer time. and um, uh, if you compare uh, the energy input uh, from the winds in the bay of bengal and arabian sea bay of bengal uh, requires much more uh, time so this uh, mixing uh, does not uh, happen and uh, so because of that bay of bengal remains relatively warmer so which mean that the warm layer on the top remains on the warm yes. uh, so in bay of bengal so if you look at the sea surface temperature in the arabian sea and bay of bengal uh, once the monsoon onset takes place arabian sea cools down and the temperature goes below 27 degree the threshold uh, uh, which is uh, told to sustain the convective activity so arabian uh, arabian sea goes down 
quickly in uh, sometime uh, in uh, June itself. Uh, but Bay of Bengal remains above 28, 28.5 degrees, which can support the convective activity in the atmosphere. So, that creates the yes, depression. Yes. So, basically, uh, Arabian Sea, it goes below 27, so not much, uh, not much uh, depression uh, can Convective take, activity can, can take. take. Uh, but here, the sea surface remains yes. hotter yes. for uh, many more uh, yes. months. Yes. That's a very uh, interesting uh, reading, I mean, very interesting point. I think we need to understand our uh, climate, our uh, weather pattern. We need to understand ocean and how ocean interacts with atmosphere and particularly monsoon because it's a, uh, it, it provides our food. For our country. Yeah, it provides food and livelihood for a huge number of population in this country and we need to do excellent research in this area. That's a point that I would like to touch upon now. Uh, what do you think we need to focus on? I mean, like uh, in India, in uh, research, uh, what are the areas, particularly in earth sciences, uh, in your opinion, we should now put our uh, efforts in? Yeah, um, I will uh, touch upon um, the monsoon and the oceans rather than, uh, because earth science, there are a lot of, lot of challenging, areas, challenging yes. areas. We have to understand the earthquakes. Uh, the yeah, basically in your uh, specialization. Yes. So, I don't want to go into those regions. See, the, now we have a difficult, uh, we, we are able to predict the monsoons, but not uh, to the finer scales. Um, that's, that's the failure. Uh, so basically, our predictive capacity is in the last 50, 60 years has improved considerably, lot, it has but improved we need to go a lot more. Yes, yeah. it is like uh, we are able to get a, um, what you call a grosser picture, mm -hmm. but we have to get the finer, uh, finer picture. So to get this finer picture, now the more and more understanding is that uh, we have to understand our uh, oceans. Mm -hmm. So we have increased our uh, uh, observing capabilities in the ocean, now we have uh, what we had uh, 10 years or 15 years back, I must say that we have uh, more than uh, 50 times or 60 times the observing uh, capability and we are uh, getting that data. So, your uh, main point is that uh, monsoon is key to us yes. and if you have to make better prediction in monsoon, yes. we need to understand now oceans even more finer. Yes. So, we need to uh, put our effort, yes. intellectual capacities into studying ocean. That's a yeah, another uh, point I will make is uh, we should also understand this in the backdrop of uh, the climate change. climate change. See, if you read uh, the uh, let that earlier uh, uh, IPCC report, mm -hmm. which uh, clearly shows that um, since 19, uh, 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 1973 onwards, the extra heat which was put in this um, earth system, I am talking about the entire heat which has yeah, gone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ninety-three percent of that heat uh, is stored in the oceans. So ocean, ocean is storing more and more exactly, energy. Exactly. Yeah, ocean is storing more and more uh, um, heat energy than uh, that. Atm atmosphere is storing just one percent, and our glaciers and land uh, is storing only three percent. So compared to that, the large um, ninety-three percent is a large heat. Uh, so if oceans are not storing. Uh, we can imagine Again, what we, and in that uh, in the recent uh, in fact i also did some research with my student what we find is that uh, the indian ocean um, is becoming more and more uh, warmer and there were uh, recent uh, research articles in uh, uh, that uh, out of this uh, 93 percent which is getting stored a large portion i think about more than 73 percent of the heat is coming to the indian ocean so, Indian Ocean is key for the monsoons and, and this, also key uh, for uh, climate change. Yes. So, so Indian we Ocean, have not uh, only a role for India but also for the world. Yes. So, lot of uh, the one of the explanation is that lot of heat from the Pacific Ocean and the data shows that uh, is getting um, accumulated in the Indian Ocean. So, now the question is if uh, Indian Ocean is uh, going to store this uh, heat, how it is going to affect our uh, monsoon? how this heat is going to come out, whether it is going to, uh, now the heat is getting uh, stored in the deeper layers in the Indian Ocean, but it cannot uh, hold uh, Only uh, alone. all the time there, whether so it, it, will, uh, uh, it will uh, give up uh, in the atmosphere, if that is going to give up in the atmosphere, then we really have a issue with the monsoons, yeah. because uh, that will, that can Seriously change our uh, patterns, or it will get transported into the other oceans uh, slowly, slowly. Uh, we don't know. So, there is a la uh, the challenging problem 
to understand what will happen to this uh, extra heat which is coming into the uh, Indian Ocean. What would you like to tell our young audience as a message? Yeah, I would uh, tell our uh, young friends that um, there is a challenging uh, task in the ocean. I only spoke about the physical oceanography and uh, uh, some interactions with the uh, atmosphere. Uh, but ocean is a store of uh, energy. For example, as I mentioned, uh, the waves, currents um, and the temperature gradients in the ocean and also um, uh, it is a source of water. So if we can figure out how we can extract fresh water from uh, um, the ocean, a lot of our drinking water problems will uh, get solved. In fact, uh, we have done a lot of research and uh, uh, the institute which I am currently heading, National Institute of Ocean Technology, uh, we have um, installed um, um, this desalination plants in uh, Kavarati, Agati and um, um, Minikoi in the Lashadip which produces uh, 1 lakh litre of uh, fresh water per day uh, through very inexpensive uh, uh, methods by taking um, advantage of uh, temperature gradient in the ocean. And uh, then um, the recent surveys in the Indian, uh, uh, around India uh, tells us that there are a lot of gas hydrates out there. These gas hydrates are uh, solidified ice uh, of uh, methane. It is lying there. And uh, one uh, rough estimate tells uh, that uh, even if we are able to extract uh, just 10% of uh, what is uh, there, it will be uh, sufficient to meet the energy requirements of our country for 100 years. That's the kind so of... So basically, uh, the point that you are making is, there is a great interesting challenge in studying ocean. Yes. And you say that young people should look at that with uh, care. There is a great possibility out there. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for this uh, exciting uh, conversation. We learnt a lot about ocean. And uh, thank you for being with us thank in you. this show. Thank, thank you, you sir. Much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks.